Experts say the explosion of misinformation in New Zealand could have devastating consequences. It comes as Wellington's protests came to a fiery and chaotic end last Wednesday afternoon. Here's Mitch McCann with our latest Because It Matters story. After 23 days, it came to a chaotic end. Parliament's playground on fire, cobblestones being hurled at police. It started as an anti-mandate protest, but exploded into something else. Many of those equipped with rocks and bricks also armed with an arsenal of false information. One day, it will be our job to try and understand how a group of people could succumb to such wild and dangerous myths and disinformation. Misinformation is false claims that weren't created with the intention of causing harm. Disinformation, meanwhile, is false information that is intended to cause harm. For months, it had been brewing, not just in Wellington. Across the country, some felt ignored or coerced, others that they were being lied to. It is not a vaccine. It is a, a genetically modified poison. The theories are endless, from claims the COVID vaccine injects metal into arms to some even falsely suggesting a link between the jab and HIV. Those who spread these theories are often convinced that they are correct. There's no sick people in Wellington. We've been down there for days and uh, now I'm here and there's no sick people here either. We're not wearing masks, any of us. Mis- and disinformation isn't new in Aotearoa, but what is is the volume of it and the viciousness. It will have an impact long term on social cohesion in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Most of the theories are spread online on apps like Telegram. News Hub 2 has been on Telegram watching it all unfold. Here, users can follow dozens of pages like Voices for Freedom or Counterspin Media. Here are just some examples of the content. Everything from suggesting New Zealand doesn't have COVID-19 to reports children are on a vaccine hit list to be injected with toxic serums. This page has 18,000 subscribers and they're broadcasting online too. Mainstream media has become a disease full of spin and propaganda. We here at Counterspin, we are the cure. We are not paid to say. These platforms are reaching more and more people. On one of the first days of this protest, as many people were watching their videos as mainstream media. Sanjana Hatutua has been examining the figures for think tank to Punaha Matatini. One misinformation producer who had more views on that producer's live stream that, than the five leading mainstream media organisations combined. Sociologist Paul Spoonley says what we're seeing here started in the USA and spread. He says those watching and sharing false news were validated by Donald Trump. We're seeing flags, we're seeing signs, we're seeing pro-Trump material that's around. And when you source a lot of the views that are being expressed in Wellington, they are being sourced out of the US. His worry is the legacy of the Wellington protest will be a message of anger and a feeling of being ignored. Spoonley believes that is the real danger. I've always said it doesn't matter how many, as long as there is one person or a group that's prepared to act out these sort of violent threats, then we have a problem. A problem Internet New Zealand says social media giants have to answer for. Jordan Carter says it's not just the likes of Telegram and Zello aiding the spread of misinformation and disinformation, it's the big players too, the ones that attract millions of Kiwis every day. And it may be that we need to go further than that and start assigning some liability on these platforms when they're not enforcing their own terms and conditions. The government isn't ruling out an inquiry into the protests and how it started. It may look at the role conspiracy theories have played. But regardless of what reviews and reports come from this, the tidal wave of myths and disinformation is growing larger. Mitch McCann, News Hub.